Um, okay, so maybe before I start, uh, I'd like to thank Luca and also Davide for your for organizing this um, doctoral school and also the, the, the consortium meeting we had before. Yeah, in this uh, beautiful place. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and also for this opportunity to present <laughs> you the, yeah, the um, European funding instruments, which are available for uh, young scholars. Um, okay, so for this last slot, so we will discuss about career development. And so I'll give a brief overview on the different um, funding schemes available. And after this, there will be a round table, um, round table discussion with all speakers. So they can also give their perspectives, give you some advice and of course reply to all questions you may have regarding your future uh, career. Um, maybe a few words about uh, Cyprom. So I work at Cyprom, which is um, a small company located in uh, Saint-Sulpice, uh, which is very close to Lausanne in uh, Switzerland. And uh, at Cyprom, we, um, we are specialized in scientific project management. And among other things, we, we provide support to researchers for the preparation and for the submission of um, proposal for uh, European collaborative uh, projects, which are uh, funded by the EU, and, uh, uh, but also for um, individual mono-beneficiary projects also funded by, by the EU, such as the ERC uh, starting ground, for, for instance. Okay, so yeah, fostering your mobility as a, as a young researcher uh, can have many benefits for you. So first, it gives you access to uh, the research facilities and uh, infrastructures, infrastructures uh, that might be needed uh, for you to make in impactful scientific research and scientific progress. It's usually a good sign of early scientific maturity and independ independence. And of course, uh, being uh, mobile, uh, you are also flexible and open-minded, you adapt to new situations, new cultures, and, and so on. So yeah. Fostering your mobility can have a great impact uh, on your scientific outputs. So for instance, your scientific publications on your career. So you, have, you can have new job options on your network for sure, on your finance. So basically you can have access to specific research funding and we'll discuss this afterwards. And of course on your personal uh, life as well. But how to foster mobility as a young researcher? Um, so first, the EuroAccess platform is a um, unique pan-European initiative which supports researchers uh, for their mobility and career de development. So this is a portal which connects researchers with universities, research organizations, businesses in Europe and even uh, worldwide. Um, so regarding scholars mobility, um, using this platform, you can uh, find job opportunities, funding opportunities, and also hosting and collaboration opportunities. And on the other side, uh, as a PI or as a research organization, you can post your job offers, uh, your vac vac yeah, vacancies, which are available in your lab, in your company or whatever. 
And all those uh, job and collaboration opportunities uh, cover all research fields. And they are open for all research profiles. So at any, you can find uh, opportunities at any career stages. And in fact, there are um, 40 Euro Access national portals. So where you can find more specific information uh, for the country, countries in which you are uh, interested in. Question here. Yeah. Um, is it a free uh, portal to post uh, vacancies there? Yes, yeah. absolutely. You just need to register. Uh, you create your profile, but uh, it's a uh, it's a free registration. Absolutely, both for for um, if you look for opportunities or if you post uh, mm. uh, job offers. Yes, okay. yeah, so good to know. You mean before, uh, even for? I mean, there, yeah, you can always register and basically you can upload your, your CV. So I can maybe go to the next slide. <sighs> no, but you can, so you can create first your profile and uh, afterwards update it, uh, I mean, um, when you are graduated and then uh, after your PhD uh, uh, graduation and so on. So you can always update your profile, uh, uh, upload your revised uh, CV and, and so on. Yes. Yeah, 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 it's a free, absolutely. Everywhere, everywhere. So for the, for the, um, specific national portals uh, it's mostly in Europe but of course you have uh, uh, elsewhere uh, but yeah you can find uh, job op opportunities all uh, all over the, the world yes yeah, yeah so it's it's a it's a very rich um, um, platform you can find m many many information uh, yeah so you, you should have a look, try playing a bit with, uh, with this portal and um, at the first, first glance, yeah, it, it, it can be useful to, to find some opportunities. Um, and this platform also provide um, some more generic information about career development. And for instance, uh, you, you have this career or orientation tool, which is a toolkit, um, including some uh, materials to yeah, self-assessment materials, some forms to, um, to, to <clears throat> evaluate, sorry, to evaluate your skills, your values, your motivations, and, and this kind of things. And you have also some training resources to improve your uh, job interview skills, uh, either within academia, but also uh, interview uh, outside academia. Uh, yeah, so lots, yeah, you can find lot, many resources uh, dedicated to career uh, development. Okay, so now uh, let's have a look on the first um, funding uh, scheme, uh, Erasmus Plus, uh, so which has been uh, renewed uh, and at least until uh, 2027. So unfortunately, the Erasmus Mundus Joint Doctorate does no longer exist. Um, but, we, but we still have the joint master degree programs. So these uh, joint master programs are designed and uh, delivered by international uh, partnership. So by consortium of at least three uh, higher, educa higher education institutions. Um, so coming from at least three different countries uh, for one to two uh, academic uh, years. 
And uh, in the end, the successful uh, students are awarded with uh, either a joint degree, joint degree or multiple uh, degrees. Uh, so any students from all over the world uh, can apply uh, to such um, joint uh, master programs, provided he or she has a bachelor degree. And there are also uh, scholarships uh, for, for, for the most successful students, let's, let's say, uh, which can cover uh, the cost for part participating in, uh, in these programs uh, and also for travel and uh, uh, living allowance. Uh, Erasmus also proposes um, some uh, uh, staff teaching and uh, training uh, funding. Uh, so basically, um, as a PhD student or as a postdoc or even later in your career, uh, you can apply for grants to get some financial support for your teaching or your training activities abroad. Um, so from two days to up to two, two, two months maximum. And yeah, so this is also something that you could uh, consider. Um, yeah. So now for Horizon uh, Europe. Um, so this uh, new program is, uh, so as three main pillars, so excellent science, global challenges and European industrial competitiveness and innovative Europe. And uh, it is um, supported by overarching uh, activities uh, that widen and straighten uh, the, the impact. Um, so this new program uh, is based on the overall structure of the previous uh, Horizon 2020 uh, program. So I will not go into the details of the program, but just for uh, focus on the two um, funding schemes, which uh, might be of interest for, for you as young researchers. So uh, the European Research Council and Mary Sklodowska Career Actions. So first for the Mary Sklodowska Career Actions. Uh, so this is a European flagship funding program for doctoral education and postdoctoral training of researchers. So there are five types of uh, Mary Sklodowska career actions funding, as you can see here in this table. So the names and also eligibility conditions slightly, slightly change uh, between Horizon Europe as compared to the, to the previous program. But yeah, in any case, I will present uh, the three um, schemes uh, which are the most relevant for you. So doctoral networks, postdoctoral fellowships, and also staff exchanges. A quick question. Yes. Staff includes uh, faculty in this description? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. we'll uh, discuss this. Uh, yes. Yeah. So doctoral networks first. Uh, so these are doctoral programs, uh, which are implemented by a consortia of at least three universities or research institutions or businesses, uh, which come from at least three different countries in Europe or even beyond. Um, so each beneficiary, so each institution must recruit at least one PhD candidate for a fellow for a fellowship between three to uh, three to thirty six months, and like any grants, uh, there are um, several eligibility conditions, of course, and one of them uh, is the mobility requirements, uh, meaning that um, the PhD candidate should not have lived nor worked in the country of 
uh, the recruiting institution for more than 12 months in the last three years before recruitment. So this is where mobility is, uh, is important, basically. Yeah. So these three universities means they must be from three different countries. Yes. Right? And doesn't matter if it is European country or country from other places. Um, so no, for doctoral, doctoral networks, so I have to check because it really depends on the, um, uh, no, I think here it doesn't matter if it, there's no need that it's uh, associated uh, countries to the, to the program, but I, I have to double check just okay. to be sure, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so then the postdoctoral fellowships. Um, so these are individual fellowships. Uh, so for uh, researchers with, of course, a PhD deg degree and uh, having less than eight years uh, experience in research. So for this, you must apply together with a host in uh, host. Uh, institution, host uh, organization, which can be a university, research institution, business or SME across Europe, Europe and beyond. And same as for the doctoral network, so you must comply with this uh, mobility requirement for the postdoctoral fellowship under Marie Sklodowska reactions. Um, so there are two different types of postdoctoral fellowships. So the European uh, fellowship, uh, so for uh, researchers moving within Europe or coming to Europe. Do, do you have information on the competitiveness, how, how difficult it is to get one of these? Yes, um, so I have a slide in the end showing, yeah, um, uh, um, let's say, yeah, around 10, 10 to 15 percent uh, of proposals are successful okay are funded. Yeah. yes thanks yeah and it's more or less similar uh, for the erc uh starting grants yeah but competitive yes yeah and that's a question so uh of course this one is about postdoc and uh, there's a phd student i have a question regarding the phd student uh, the post uh, the, the doctoral network yes so do they accept the uh, application continuously or through the year, or it is uh, a few calls? No, uh, it's it's a call. I, 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 I have also a slide on the next open call. Uh -huh. So, okay. but it's for doctoral networks uh, under uh, Maris Claude of Skaka reaction. It's it's uh, yearly uh, calls, and you have to to okay. to submit proposal. <clears throat> Uh, so yes, so the European Fellowship uh, uh, really targets um, researchers moving within Europe or coming to Europe, and the fellowship lasts uh, between one and two years, and there is absolutely no nationality restriction. On the contrary, we have the Global uh, Postdoctoral Fellowship, uh, which funds the mobility of researchers outside Europe. Um, so here the fellowship uh, lasts between two and three years, but this must include uh, a written phase of one year to uh, uh, an, insti in, an institution located based in, in, in Europe. And in, in that case, only nationals and long-term residents of uh, EU member states and uh, associated countries can apply to this uh, to this uh, fellowship. Um, yeah, and in order to facilitate building bridges between academic and non-academic sectors, short-term secondments can be allowed anywhere uh, in the world during the the, the fellowship as well has some additional support to carry out a placement mm -hmm. up to six months in, um, in a non-academic organization, but this should be done uh, 
towards the end of, of the, the, the fellowship. Okay. And now, so still under the Mary Sklodowska reaction, so we have these uh, staff exchanges. Uh, so those uh, staff exchanges found the mobility within collaborative projects with international and intersectoral um, exchanges of staff members between different organizations uh, from the academic and non-academic sectors. And uh, seconded staff members can be funded um, from one month up to one year maximum, but uh, this should be followed by a uh, uh, return uh, to the sending uh, organization after, afterwards. And these staff exchanges are open for researchers at any career, at any career stage, so including uh, PhD candidates. And also uh, it's open for other workforce, not only uh, researchers. Do you know what kind of costs are covered? Which kind of which kind of costs? No, I, 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 we can check afterwards. Okay. But okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure, the tra the travel uh, travel. Um, I don't know if there is a um, living allowance, which is uh, which is. Uh, I, I don't know. I have okay. to. I have to okay. check for sure. The, for sure, travel and uh, but we ca we can have a look afterwards uh, if, if you if you are interested. Yeah. I yeah I would say that it I think it really depends on your uh, institution and on the sending uh, organization and on the receiving institution because then they need to uh, establish a um, collaboration agreements and I uh, between the two two organ between the two or organizations yeah yeah so this should be formalized if you if you want if you want to 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 benefit from this uh, staff exchanges um, uh, funding Say it again, please, please. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably at, at the department level, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know the... Um, Okay. Yeah, the details of the contractual management between uh, such, uh, yeah, between the universities and so on. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I think it depends also on the countries. It depends on the countries. It depends on the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It doesn't make sense to 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 wait more than yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So but in any case, this needs to be formalized in, in some way. Yeah. So the exchange should be international, or is this mandatory? Yeah, it's in international and intersectoral. Also, you you, you need to prove that uh, you can um, 
learn something new from mm -hmm. another yeah. uh, 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 that you can bring back to your uh, okay. to your uh, organization. Okay, so it, for example, we cannot send uh, staff to a German institute. No, okay. Uh, from uh, from, from Amo. Amo. No, no okay. not via not via this uh, this uh, scheme. Oh. For staff exchanges, no. Is there any national uh, possibilities? I guess so, but then you have to. Yeah, I don't know for the specificities for in each country, but for sure you can have uh, opportunities. National, uh, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think this would be interesting to look for for a transfer from Chalmers to Amo uh, for a few months. Yeah. Yep. If you are still SME. Yes, we are. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, just to let you know that uh, this year we celebrate the 25th anniversary of this uh, Mary's Kurdoska reactions. Okay, so now um, moving. Uh, Moving on with the uh, European Research Council, Council which uh, proposes um, six different uh, funding schemes. And so, yeah, today I, I will only uh, present the ERC starting grants, which is the most relevant for, uh, for you as PhD student. Um, so you can apply to an ERC starting grant uh, between two and seven years after your PhD uh, degree. Uh, you must apply together with a host institution, which can be a public or a private research organization uh, based in Europe. So um, member states or associated country. And Contrary to the Maris Klodowska reaction, there is no uh, mobility requirements here for the for the ERC starting uh, grants. Um, so you can receive up to 1.5 million for uh, five years maximum. And yeah, the proposals are uh, evaluated uh, based on the excellence of course, of the research project, but also of the PI submitting uh, the, uh, the proposal. Um, so, yeah, so you have calls for proposal uh, each year and they cover uh, all scientific fields. So you have uh, specific panels in uh, three different model, uh, dom domains, life science, so social science and humanities and uh, physical uh, uh, science and engineering. Um, so more concretely, how to, how to apply. Uh, so this is, an example of a template, uh, proposal template uh, from uh, for an ERC starting run, but yeah, it, it's quite similar for, uh, for instance, for the uh, postdoctoral fellowship uh, under Maris Klodowska reaction. So basically, you have um, for the proposals, you have several uh, parts. So part A, which is um, the administrative submission form where you need to give some information about the participants, about the budget. If you have any uh, ethical issues in your project, you, you have also to, to comply with this and explain this. Then you have part B1, which uh, includes an extended synopsis of your um, scientific proposal and scientific research, uh, your CV, and early achievements track record, which is uh, very important. And only part B1 is evaluated at the first step of the evaluation uh, process. And if you are successful at the first step, then um, 
part B2 will be evaluated and part B2 is your scientific proposal per se. Do you have any examples of what uh, an achievement is? Uh, so for sure, the scientific uh, publications, patents, um, awards, and awards, awards, any, um, part, any participation to big conferences in, in your field, uh, very um, uh, highly relevant uh, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, this kind of. Uh, Maybe this is preceding the panel uh, discussion, but um, I might think that if you can find uh, achievements that are um, unique, maybe that that's, um, make you seem a bit, little bit different. That could be a benefit. So try to be creative in thinking about what you can do that can be counted as an achievement and, and make you um, stick out a little bit in competition. Um, yeah, so part B2 is, is your scientific proposal. So, and then it's divided in, in, in different subsections. So state of the art and objectives of your project, uh, methodology, and you, you need also to uh, detail uh, the budget and which re resources you will need uh, to perform uh, the work and all activities which are described. Uh, so at the second step of the, um, of the evaluation process, uh, part B1 and part B2 and the budget are evaluated both by panel members, but also by uh, external uh, uh, reviewers. And you also need to provide some supporting documentation. So PhD certificate, but and uh, a support letter from your uh, host institution and some additional uh, documents uh, as well. <clears throat> okay, uh, so next calls. Uh, yeah, because this is yeah, this is for the starting grants, so um, individual uh, finish. Yeah, you have you have the, you have the synergy uh, synergy grant. This is this one. <laughs> synergy. <laughs> So you can, so you have, okay. yeah, you have these six different schemes, so. Uh, no, for, stu for, so for students, uh, the starting grant is the, mo the most relevant and you can apply it after your, your PhD um, uh, degree, two, two to seven years after you got your, your PhD. Seven years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you can apply for the advanced. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so for the next calls, so um, first for the Erasmus master programs, so you should consult the, there is a catalog that you can consult uh, with the different courses, with the different uh, universities which are involved in, in this uh, joint uh, master programs. What are the entry requirements and these kind of things. So usually um, the organization uh, request students to apply between October and January for the um, for courses starting the next uh, academic uh, year. 
And then for uh, Marie's Klodowska reaction, so the, um, for the doctoral networks and for the uh, postdoctoral fellowship, so uh, the most recent poll just opened uh, two weeks ago. So with deadline uh, mid-November and mid-September respectively. And for the ERC starting grant, so the next call uh, will open uh, mid of July, but this is, yeah, this is only a tentative uh, date uh, still to be confirmed by the ERC. Last slide be before uh, our round table uh, discussion um, with maybe a few tips and uh, maybe, yeah, some common mistakes that you should try to, to avoid, but yeah, maybe we can discuss this further further during the, the roundtable discussion. Uh, so yeah, I don't have time now to think about what I want to do after my PhD and uh, where and how and yeah, you should treat your um, your research project and your career development with the same prior priority it's really important i can do it alone and uh yeah uh you don't yeah you don't submit this uh, application and and this kind of thing yeah but you should also seek for some support you have uh several supports uh uh, around you, so you have uh, for sure a grant office in your institution, which can uh, help you. Uh, national contact point also in your country, and of course your network. Uh, so you can ask to your first to your PhD supervisor, but also with to your I don't know if you have some postdocs. Uh, in your team, in your departments that you can discuss with them at conferences also and, and so on. And yeah, very important also because as we as we discussed this, for instance, uh, postdoctoral fellowships, uh, Marie Curie's Klodowska actions or ERC study grants are very competitive uh, fellowships. So um, yeah, you, you need to have good track of records. And so you, 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 you clearly need to make an honest analysis of who you are, what you want to do, what are uh, your, um, your uh, plans. If, I mean, if you don't want to, to go abroad because uh, for several reasons, because of family matters or whatever, yeah, this is uh, your choice, but then you, you, you should not go for a Maris Klodowska reaction, for, for sure, no. So yeah, based on when you, when you know a bit more what you want to do, based on that, you can identify what could be the best funding instrument for you. And once it's done, carefully read the work programs their instructions, use the appropriate templates. Otherwise, your proposal can simply be rejected for uh, because it's not eligible uh, for administrative stuff sometimes. So be careful with, uh, with that. And I'm sure that um, the senior, uh, more senior, let's say, uh, uh, researchers, scientists, engineers we have here can also provide uh...